In this video, I'm going to be traveling back in time to play the first universe mode that was ever added into the WWE games. Now, I've been making a lot of content in 2K24 lately, and just to avoid letting myself get burnt out, especially after they released a new patch just recently which broke the game again, it might be nice to go back to another game. I'm going to go back to an older game and see how it was done the very first time. And before I jump in, I just have a couple things to say about SmackDown vs. Raw 2011. The crazy thing about this game is I never actually played this game when it came out. I was totally not into WWE at this time as I was in high school and you could have held a gun to my head, a knife to my throat, hung me up by my toes, and dipped me in sulfuric acid before I would ever watch WWE in 2011. Right, so now that I've got that out of the way, I am sincerely hoping that SmackDown vs. Raw 2011 is a better product than WWE was in 2011. And here we are in Universe. You can see it already like starts you out at the default, I guess, to what WWE was at the time. Kind of like 2K24 starts you out kind of how WWE is now. now. Let's go through some of the options here and see what's different. So the card, we got R-Truth versus Primo. Jericho and Miz versus DX. Dude, what? Jericho and Miz as a tag team? Was this real? Does this actually happen? Randy Orton versus Ted DiBiase. And this is bald Randy Orton. Absolute menace in a number one contenders match between Edge and Sheamus. All right, so what happens if I hit custom match? Oh, it just brings up all the match types. Yo, Inferno matches in this game. That is sick. How is Hell in a Cell new? Did they take Hell in a Cell out in like 2010 or something and then add it back in and call it a new feature? This is like some 2K shit to take something out and add it back. They weren't even developing the game back then. Look at all these backstage brawl arenas. Holy shit. GM office, large locker room, Two different locker rooms, interview, catering, parking lot, and then there's a match creator, a bare bones version of what 2K has now, where you can kind of create matches. It doesn't seem like this is like too in depth. Okay, yeah, it's literally almost like the same thing. And it looks like scrolling through the rest of these, there's not many more match type. Ooh, Armageddon Hell in a Cell. That's just a six man Hell in a Cell though, that's not really new. The Championship Scramble. What is a Championship Scramble? That sounds like a, a breakfast at Denny's or IHOP or something. So I had to look this up. The Championship Scramble is apparently a match type. It's like a gauntlet match, pretty much. But whoever wins the title, if you win the title before the next person enters, you're the WWE Champion. So that's kind of different from a gauntlet match, being that you can win in the middle of the match. All right, so it looks like there's not many different match types in this game. Inferno match is really cool. We're definitely going to have to try the Inferno match. Uh, the schedule. So we got Raw on Monday. Superstars. What the fuck? fuck is superstars no i don't want to sim to the date i just want to know what it is is there no way to just like edit the show to show what it is maybe if i go to no that doesn't edit the show is there no way to edit the shows oh wow i don't think you can change the shows it's just raw superstars and smackdown you can't really okay well let's look at our pay-per-views so we got backlash stream rules of uh, the bash night of champions SummerSlam. i remember this SummerSlam logo did they use this SummerSlam logo for multiple years or something? Because I I remember this logo. What was the main event of the SummerSlam? Maybe I've seen a match or two from the SummerSlam or something. Uh, Hell in a Cell. I never liked Hell in a Cell being a pay-per-view, and I never liked TLC either. You shouldn't have a pay-per-view just themed around gimmick matches and then only have, like, one or two gimmick matches on the show. Kind of doesn't make any sense. Bragging rights. Just by the logo, this looks like it might be a SmackDown vs. Raw-specific show. Survivor Series. I can see that they didn't bother centering the logo on any of these. Uh, TLC, like back in this time, I wasn't watching WWE, but I was on a wrestling forum heavy, watching like TNA and ROH and stuff. And I remember that like they would post like the raw results or like WWE results from the week. And it was like a thing on the website to go and just shit on every match because they all look like shit. And I remember one time there was a chairs match. Good Lord, I'm not going to look it up now. But in the comments, if you remember the chairs match, oh my goodness. That's the one where Big Show brought out the big chair, right? <laughs> big Show had a chair that was Big Show sized. Royal Rumble in January. Uh, at least they kind of centered that logo. The Elimination Chamber. The Elimination Chamber is like one of the gimmick matches that I don't mind the pay-per-view being or branded around as it's like a major match type that you can't just like pull out on a regular show like a ladder match. Like this shit takes some setup to it. And then WrestleMania. All right. So let's go all the way back. 
See, Backlash will be our first pay-per-view, and let's hop into Monday Night Raw. All right, match one, R-Truth versus Primo. So let's change this because I don't know who Primo is. Uh, R-Truth is fine. He's awesome. Um, let's change this to see who all we got in the game. Who the fuck is Vance Archer? Who the fuck is this dude? Yo, why they do my man Tyson kid like that, man? My man's already got the fucked up spiked haircut in the front. Why you give him this render? My man looks like he's sucking something out of his teeth. Like he like he just ate popcorn or something. Santino Morella, dude. Like I said, watching WW in this time must have been a fucking chore. Oh my god. Now, one thing I do remember around WWE at this time was Randy Orton. Specifically bald Randy Orton. Because this motherfucker was the funniest person on planet Earth. I remember seeing videos of this dude kicking people in the head for no reason, and that shit was so funny. Evan Bourne? Okay. One of the most underrated WWE superstars, in my opinion. Matt Seidel is awesome. I'm gonna be a big problem. And then we got Kofi Kingston in the trunks, throwing up gang signs and shit. Oh shit, Luke Gallows? This must be like Straight Edge Society, Luke Gallows. Oh, that means Straight Edge Society Punk must be in this game. I don't think I've played a wrestling game with that version of Punk in it before. Matt Hardy? Well, this is 2011. I'm guessing Jeff isn't in this game. No, Jeff was... Yeah, Jeff was in TNA at this time, because I was watching TNA at this time. Or he was about to go to TNA 1. Dude, look at Drew McIntyre. He looks like a little baby. Yep, I was right. Straight Edge Punk is in the game. There he is. Yeah, I've never played a game with Straight Edge Punk before. I think we might go Punk versus R-Truth. Christian as well. That's dope. The big bald show. I think we go R-Truth versus Punk. Or wait, no. Punk's on SmackDown. Okay, well, let's go R-Truth versus Batista then. Dude, holy shit, how long is this fucking entrance, man? Holy shit. Man was really out here performing a whole song on the way to the ring. You'd think they'd have been like, yeah, on the way to the ring, like, it's okay if you rap, but can you just rap, like, the best verse of the song? And he's like, nah, I think I just want to perform the whole thing start to finish. Dude, what is this Batista entrance? He didn't even do the pyro. This is the lamest shit I've ever seen in my life. Batista just walking to the ring like a normal dude? Half of the fun of picking Batista was seeing him do the pyro. And here we go, bell rings. Batista with a shoulder tackle and an STO. Batista with just a, a badly rendered dragon on the back of his trunks. What is this Batista, dude? This is fucked up. Black Hole Slam. Abyss Tista. Our truth now gets under. Irish Whip floats under. Batista goes over the top. Our truth knocks him to the outside. Truth now picks up Batista. Gourd Buster on the floor and a knee drop. Both men back in the ring at a five count. Our truth gonna try to throw Batista out again. Batista, though, kick to the gut, stuns R-Truth right into the barricade. And now Batista picks him up. Dude, no way the hot shot was in this game as well. Batista pulls out an ankle lock. The WWE 2K games love that fucking face-first plant hot shot move, whether it's off the ropes or the, the apron or whatever. Kick to the gut, fireman's carry by R-Truth. Now whips Batista off the ropes again, catches him, drop kick. R-Truth going to the top rope. Harlem hangover to the outside. Batista does not care. And now Batista up on the apron. Drops the leg on R-Truth. Batista lifts R-Truth to his feet. Picks the leg. Another ankle lock by Batista. And now he lifts R-Truth to his feet again. Picks him up. Drops him down. R-Truth goes behind. Steps out of the clothesline. Batista catches himself on the ropes. And now Batista lifts him up. Scoop slam center of the ring. Lifts him up again, but R-Truth sweeps the legs. Now a kick to the gut, but Batista reverses with a hard clothesline. Picks up R-Truth into another one. Keeps that wrist locked. And now it looks like Batista has a signature move. Off the ropes, kick to the face. I guess that was his signature because now he has a finisher. You gotta love Batista's off the ropes, kick to the face. And now Batista kicks him in the gut. Could he be looking for it? The Batista bomb. Batista into the cover, referee into the count. And that's a three count. Batista has beaten R-Truth. All right, next up on Raw, we have Jericho and Miz versus DX. And I didn't notice before, but it looks like this is a tag team falls count anywhere match. Let's jump right into it then. Dude, no way. This is Glow Sticks DX. Why did the entrance just stop? I didn't stop the entrance. It just, it just went to the next one. It saw Glow Sticks DX and it said, ah, yeah, well, that's enough. Let's go to something else. Oh, wait. Jericho and Miz attack DX from behind. Jericho and Miz assaulting Glowsticks DX in this Falls Count Anywhere match. Miz with a kick to the gut, grabs Shawn Michaels in a headlock, swinging DDT. But now Triple H with Jericho lifts him up, vertical suplex. Miz skull crushing finale goes for the pin on Shawn Michaels. 
and the Miz wins the match. <laughs> Dude, no fucking way. No way that just happened. Well, I guess there you have it. Jericho and Miz just completely stomp DX. I guess that's what you get for bringing out the glow sticks, brother. Dude, what are they doing? Are they fucking politicians? Like, what's going on here? What is this weird-ass long cutscene? Next match on Raw, we have a submission match between Randy Orton and Ted DiBiase. And here we go, Randy Orton and Ted... Wait, is that Cody Rhodes? No knee pads, Cody Rhodes, and a half... Dude, why is the... <laughs> why is the arena empty? Look at the arena, why is it empty? Did the fans heard Randy Orton versus Ted DiBiase in a submission match and they all went to catering or to use the bathroom? And honestly, can you really even blame them? Randy Orton's even leaving the ring. I don't get why you would program a game for the arena to look half empty. I'm sorry, I just that just is insane to me. Orton now from behind with that backbreaker, dragging Ted DiBiase to the center of the ring. Remember, this is a submission match. DiBiase now takes over with a headlock. And now Orton, DDT, center of the ring. Orton takes him over. Backbreaker again. DiBiase is all over Randy Orton right now. Drops the elbow. Orton back to his feet. But DiBiase goes under. Elbow to the kidneys. Orton float over DDT. Randy Orton staying on the offense here. European uppercut. Orton now. He's looking for it. Punt kick. Now he lifts DiBiase up. RKO. And now he locks DiBiase in a bow and arrow. And that's a tap. DiBiase is out. I hear voices too, Randy, is what that sign says. Yo, I think I think that's just mental illness. All right, in the main event for Monday Night Raw, we have a number one contenders match between Edge and Sheamus. I'm going to assume that it's a number one contenders match for the world title. It doesn't say, but that's just what I'm going to assume. And wait, John Cena coming down to ringside in, the, in this empty ass. Why would you? Bro, if you know the arena's empty, why would you cut to it? It cuts to a wide shot of the arena, and it's just like a bunch of empty seats and two dudes sitting there. I'm guessing John Cena must be the champion then, as he just meanders about in the background. He's walking back and forth. Sheamus with a poke to the eyes of Edge, able to get back to his feet. Takes control of this match. Irish whip. Sheamus with a, a move, and now turns his attention to John Cena. And Cena just following Sheamus everywhere outside the ring. Tries to grapple him, but he misses. Sheamus back in the ring. Grads Edge in a headlock, driving the knees into the chest. And now Edge with a headlock. Rakes the eyes, returns the favor. But Sheamus, German suplex. And now Edge, DDT. Sheamus trying to show off, gets caught. Sheamus stunned on the ropes. Edge has him under, looking for that guillotine. Now Edge lifting Sheamus back to his feet and a straight kick to the face. But, but again, Sheamus with a poke to the eyes. And now Sheamus with an Irish whip does nothing. Edge catches him with a punch. Edge whipped into the turnbuckle. Sheamus trying to follow up. Shoulder thrust lifts Edge up to the top. Decides to show off. Edge makes his way off the turnbuckle. Catches Sheamus. But Sheamus Irish whip again. STO. Now Sheamus with Edge. Side slam backbreaker. Edge quickly back to his feet. Sheamus shows off and pays for it. Edge just stomping out the challenger. This match to be the number one contender for John Cena's title. Now Sheamus throws Edge to the floor. Edge quickly back in the ring. Grab Sheamus, goes under. Elbow to the back of the head. And now Sheamus throws Edge to the outside again. And he shows off to the empty arena in the background. Was this what 2011 WWE was actually like? Is this legit? Just nobody was there. Sheamus again. Iris whips Edge. Catches him into a move again. I'm not sure what move it is, but it's it's a move. And now grabs him, slams him down. You're a Nagi. And now Edge looks for that straight kick again. Sheamus ducks it into the corner. Sheamus clothesline. And now John Cena climbing up on the ropes, distracts, tries to distract Sheamus, but he does not fall for it. And just as I say that, he goes out for Cena. And now Cena throws Sheamus in the ring. Edge going to take advantage, stomping the gut, looking for that guillotine again. Nope, nope, just pulls Sheamus in the ring. Shows off, and Sheamus kicks him in the gut. Side slam, backbreaker. Who will get the upper hand in this main event match? Sheamus sits down. He's got that submission locked in deep. Will Edge tap out? Edge able to work himself out. Picks up Sheamus, drops him down. Oh, shit, what's going on? Edge talking shit to Cena at ringside. Sheamus with the stairs. Oh, he drops him. I'm not sure, entirely sure what's happening now in this match. But Sheamus... Grabs Edge into a backbreaker. Lifts him back up to his feet. Irish whip. Bro kick. 
Edge ducks the broad kick. Whip Sheamus in the corner. The rated R superstar with an opportunity. Now trapping Sheamus in the tree of woe. Sheamus able to escape. Goes behind again. Grabs Edge. Edge having trouble maintaining any offense in this match. Sheamus big overhand punch. Both competitors fighting on the outside. You're at Nagi on the floor. Sheamus picks him up again. Looking for it again, but Edge escapes. Referee up to a five count now. Both competitors head back in the ring. Edge now grabs Sheamus. Back outside the ring. Vertical suplex. Sheamus goes behind again. Gets caught. Back in the ring again at a six count. Sheamus catches Edge with a back elbow. But Edge again reversing. Picks up Sheamus. Another suplex. Floats over into the cover, but a rope break is called. And now Bulldog. Edge is closing in on a win in this match. Will it be Edge versus Cena at Backlash? And now Sheamus' Snapmare takeover. Locks in a submission. Edge going to fight his way out with headbutts right to the nose. Sheamus moves in with an STO, though. Into the cover now to face John Cena. And Edge will kick out at 2.9. Now Edge lifts up Sheamus and gets his eyes poked again. Sheamus lifts him up. Another Uranagi into the cover to face John Cena at Backlash. Sheamus beats Edge. All right, so now let's recap Raw. So in the opening match, Batista defeats R-Truth. In a tag team falls count anywhere match, Jericho and Miz, the greatest tag team that's ever been conceived ever, defeated Glow Sticks DX, or should I say just completely stomped Glow Sticks DX. Bald Randy Orton beat Ted DiBiase in a submission match. In a number one contenders match in the main event, Sheamus beats Edge. And I guess this was for the world title since John Cena was out there. So I'm also guessing that John Cena's... Oh, wait. I can actually check that. And that, while I'm on that topic, that makes me remember that I didn't check any of the champions yet. So yeah, the WWE champion is John Cena. So Sheamus will face John Cena at Backlash. United States champion, The Miz. Unified WWE Tag Team Champions, The Hart Dynasty. So... The tag team champions are on both brands then. And the Divas champion, Alicia Fox. We still have the Divas championship in this game. And then for SmackDown, we have the GOAT. Rey Mysterio is the world heavyweight champion. Uh, Dolph is the intercontinental champion. And yeah, the tag team championships are cross-brand. And we have the actual women's championship as well. So Michelle McCool holds that one. So for news, The Miz and Triple H are now enemies. And Randy Orton and Ted DiBiase's relationship has gotten even worse. And I do want to look at the teams as well because I scrolled past it a minute ago and it looks like there's not many in this game. Yeah, the universe mode, you get seven teams to start off with. So you get the Heart Dynasty. Dude, what is the tag team of Jericho and Miz? What is this, man? The Straight Edge Society, Morrison and R-Truth, okay. MVP and Mark Henry. Kane and Taker, and then Glow Sticks DX. All right, and if we go back to the schedule, it looks like it's time for us to actually hop into Superstars. So I'm going to sim up to this date, and we will now go through Superstars. So up first on Superstars, we've got Tyson Kidd and Primo. And this game loves Primo. Wasn't he also the opening match on Raw? Is this dude like an opening match god or something? Am I just not remembering? Matt Hardy and Kelly Kelly take on Cody Rhodes and Michelle McCool. Mixed tag team match. That's kind of interesting. Another tag team match, Luke Gallows and Shad Gaspard take on Ray and Big Show, and that's actually the main event. And Tyson Kidd just sprinting to the ring, and Luthez Press, Tyson Kidd starting off Superstars hot here. The referee rings the bell. Is that Tyson who has the signature, or is that Primo? I couldn't tell. I guess it's Tyson. That would make sense. Oh, shit. Well, that move was dope. I've never seen that before. Into a gut buster. Primo back to his feet again, gets caught with a kick. Primo with no offense yet in this match. Just as I say that, he moves in with a drop kick, but Tyson Kidd merely stunned by it. And now Primo, Irish whip. Gets caught, though, belly to belly. Now Kidd moves in again. Head scissor takeover. He decided he didn't want to go to the outside after all. Comes immediately back in the ring. Primo, though, returns the favor. Now Primo's getting some offense in. We can see if this is truly the opening match god of 2011 WWE. And he hops on the back. Spin around, Hurricane Rana. Into the cover. And chin kicks out. I don't know, man. Primo's kind of cooking here. Tyson Kidd, though, catches him. Irish whip off the ropes. Tilt to world backbreaker. Now Tyson Kidd from behind grabs him into a neck breaker. Tyson Kidd going for a springboard all the way across the ring. Now dragging Primo to the center of the ring. Tyson Kidd into the cover, hooks the leg. Referee for the count. And that's a. Th Ooh, Primo actually kicked out. Primo steps behind. 
The opening match, God beginning to cook here. Tyson into the corner. Now Primo lifts him to the top turnbuckle, but The Miz coming sprinting to the ring. Dude, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've already seen enough of the fucking Miz in this game. Can we have less of The Miz, please? And a spinning roundhouse by Tyson. Tyson slips behind again, side rushing leg sweep. Kid now lifts Tyson to his feet into a drop kick. Beautiful drop kick there by Tyson Kid, but Primo now. Gets back on offense. Side rush and leg sweep into the turnbuckle. And now he slips behind. Drop kick to the back. Tyson Kidd again does not care. Primo's moves seem to be inflicting no damage on Tyson Kidd. Tyson again goes for the cover, hooks the leg. The referee not caring about the cover chooses to go have a conversation with The Miz. And The Miz immediately climbs back up on the ropes. We are still mid pin distraction here. This is about a 50 count. Tyson Kids beat Primo. <laughs> Did he just leave? <laughs> Primo kicks out, though. My games. I think The Miz yeah. just said fuck it. He wanted to interrupt there. this match for a minute and a half, and then he just left. And now Primo lifts up Tyson Kidd into a scoop slam. Is this what Superstars was back in, uh, like, is this what Superstars was like back in 2011? If so, I can see why I never, uh, why I didn't know what this show was. Nice float over DVT, though. And now he's heading up to the top turnbuckle, diving body splash. And here we go, the opening match. God beginning to cook on Tyson Kidd from behind the backcracker. Into the cover for the win. The opening match, God beats Tyson Kidd. So to recap, superstars, the opening match, God Primo, once again setting the standard for WWE in 2011 as he beats Tyson Kidd in the opening match. Matt Hardy and Kelly Kelly defeat Cody Rhodes and Michelle McCool. And then Rey Mysterio in the Big Show defeat the team of Shad Gaspard and Luke Gallows. All right, and now to recap some of our rivalries here, Tyson Kidd and Primo's relationship has gotten even worse. You, do, you hate to see that, man. Two dudes, just, just hug it out, man. Just thug it out. Kelly Kelly and Michelle McCool's relationship has gotten even worse. You don't like to see that, man. Two beautiful ladies, just hug it out. Just thug it out, you know? And this is one you really don't like to see because this is the these are like the two top guys on SmackDown, so... Luke Gallows and Rey Mysterio's relationship has gotten even worse. And you hate to see that between two dudes, man. Just hug it out, just thug it out. All right, and now here we are at the first episode of SmackDown. Let's run down the card really quick. Didn't mean to click on that. So to open up SmackDown, we've got Matt Hardy versus Cody Rhodes. This could actually be a good match here. The Hart Dynasty takes on the Straight Edge Society. CM Punk and Luke Gallows. A four-way steel cage match. Drew McIntyre, MVP, Christian, and Kane. And actually, when I go back, the Straight Edge Society versus Heart Dynasty match is actually a tables match. I do like in this older universe, it seems to add more custom match types to the match card, which is cool. In 24, it's pretty much just normal matches and tag team matches. And then in the main event, Big Show takes on Jack Swagger. And Cody Rhodes sliding in the ring from behind Matt Hardy. Attacks him from behind with a clothesline. No knee pads. Cody Rhodes means business in this here match go. here. Lifts Matt Hardy to his feet. Cody Rhodes gets reversed. Matt Hardy, shoulder breaker. Cody finally reverses, getting some offense in. Throws Hardy over. Cody Irish whips Hardy in the corner. Looks to follow up. He goes to the Cody second. Rhodes, goes for a tornado DDT and hits it. Cody Rhodes again going to throw Hardy into the turnbuckle. Moves in, climbs up to the second again. Looking for another tornado DDT and he hits it. Matt Hardy gets caught in a hip toss. Shakes the whole arena. Cody lifts up Hardy again. Hardy is stunned. Cody Rhodes locks in a submission, but Matt Hardy is right at the ropes, and he gets a rope break. Now Cody using the full five count. That's actually cool that you can use the five count in this game. Can you do that in 2K24? If you can do that in 2K24, I've literally never seen that happen. And now Cody off the ropes. Matt catches him, atomic drop. And now Matt Hardy gonna throw Cody into the turnbuckle. Both men pace for pace here as Cody up to the top. Matt Hardy gonna follow him up there. Looks like he may be going for a superplex. Spills over the top rope and Cody spinning kick, but Matt dodges it. Cody Rhodes still fighting though. Grabs Matt Hardy into the corner. And now Cody Rhodes unleashing the 10 punches on Matt Hardy. Well, it was only three, but we'll just call it 10. And now he lifts up Hardy into a scoop slam. Into the cover off the scoop slam is Cody Rhodes. And he beats Matt Hardy with a scoop slam. Embarrassing performance by Matt Hardy. Tag team tables match underway. A win here by the Straight Edge Society over the tag team champions. One would think that would put them in contention for the titles. Luke Gallows with a shoulder tackle knocks him away. 
now grabs the stairs and destroys Tyson Kidd. The neck breaker by Hart gets caught by Punk. Springboard by Kidd. Gallows back on his feet. I love that in this game, people just no sell moves like it didn't just happen. And now Punk slips behind. Backdrop. Luke Gallows getting caught with kicks over in the corner. Catches him with a back elbow. And now Punk with Kidd. Catches him in a spinning power slam. Punk going to turn his attention to the table. Might be a smart move in this tables match. Uh, well, he just threw it out of the ring, so never mind. And now Punk throwing the table back in the ring. And now Tyson Kidd gets slammed into the table. Makes it away, though. And Hurricane Rana's his own partner. Punk grabs Davy Boy Smith. Russian leg sweep. And now Davy Boy Smith gets thrown into the table. Punk unable to follow up. Tyson Kidd whips Punk, but gets caught in a neck breaker. And now Luke Gallows lifting up Tyson Kidd again. Hits him with a power slam. Kidd gets Irish whipped into the table. Luke Gallows looking to follow up. Davy Hart Smith does nothing. You know, the AI in this game is fighting for their life right now. They have no idea what's going on. Luke Gallows side slam. Head scissor takeover on Punk. David Hart Smith gets thrown into the table. And now Punk gets thrown into the table. So does the AI actually know how to throw people through the table? Or do they just know how to throw people into the table? I guess we'll find out. Or we won't as Luke Gallows knocks away the table. Now Luke Gallows and Punk looking for a double team. Tyson Kidd takes the advantage on Punk. Whips him into the corner. Luke Gallows able to save his partner. Now Punk float over DDT. And now Gallows grabbing Tyson Kidd. Looking for that choke bomb. Luke Gallows again going to set that table up into the corner. Will he be able to put Tyson Kidd through it and win the match? Nope. It looks like he's already forgotten that it's there. Reverse power slam. Punk bringing another table in the ring. Surely if there's two tables, somebody's got to be bound to go through one. And there we go. Punk set it up. Well, he uh, unset it up as well. And now Gallows gets whipped into the table. No follow-up by Tyson Kidd. David Hart Smith now with a table. Tries to hit Gallows. Gallows was mid-dodge roll. He had eye frames there. Punk again going to try to set up the table and gets neck breaker. Now David Hart Smith with the table and he can't set it up either. Luke Gallows now going to try to set up the table for the final time. And just throws it out of the ring. Oh, and he's back in the ring with the table. Tyson Kidd from behind grabs Gallows. And he trips over the tables. Who will be able to finally figure out how tables work in this tables match? Tyson Kidd gets planted again. Punk running knee into the Bulldog. And now Punk sets the table up in the corner. Has he figured it out? David Hart Smith, jawbreaker. Gallows now tries. Tyson Kidd tries to whip him, but he gets tripped over the tables again. Tyson Kidd all over Luke Gallows here. Off the ropes, drop kick to the face, and Punk with a Tiger suplex. And now Gallows again into the table. David Hart Smith in the table as well. Tyson Kidd lifts up Luke Gallows and drops him down, chops him on the neck. And here we go, a table finally set up. Dude, look at the legs on this table. Why is this table so fucking big? It almost comes to the top rope. With a table set up in the ring, we are one step closer. Who will be the first to crash through it? Shin breaker. And now Gallows with Tyson Kidd. Punk gets Irish whipped over the ropes. Misses the table completely. Gallows now with Tyson Kidd. Up against the table. Davy Boy Smith trying to save his partner. And now Gallows gets driven into the table back first. David Hart Smith lifts him up. And Tyson Kidd gets lifted up by Punk, who will put their opponent through the table first. Both men escape the tables. David Hart Smith running power slam. Luke Gallows now looking for that bomb again. Hits Tyson Kidd with it. Punk with a Tiger bomb. Or Tiger driver, I should say. Tyson Kidd into the table. Reverses Luke Gallows. Now Hart Smith into the table. Punk wrestles the table away from him. But gets caught in a neck breaker. Fisherman suplex on Luke Gallows. Incredible strength from one half of the tag team champions. Tyson Kidd heads up to the top. Floats over with a blockbuster. Punk gets caught, thrown over. So does Luke Gallows. Tag team champions are cooking right now. Got lifted up, running power slam. Sharp shooter on Luke Gallows. Davey Hart Smith pulls out a sledgehammer. Neck breaker on Luke Gallows. Tyson Kidd up to the top rope, dives but misses. I think I should have played this match because I, yeah, I don't think the AI knows how to slam people through the table. You know, we're we're pretty deep in this match here, and they've just stopped using the tables at this point altogether. Nobody's even touched one in like five minutes. I don't want to restart the match. Control types. Well, it doesn't look like I can take control mid-match, so... We're just going to play this out a little bit more and see if they eventually learn how to lose the table. Luke Gallows gets lifted up again. Gord Buster. David Hart Smith with a sledgehammer to Luke Gallows. And now lifts him up. Looking for that running power slam. Now from behind with a suplex. Tyson Kidd going to try to lock in the sharpshooter again. I get so excited when they get close to the table. But yeah, I, I, I think I might have to just sim this because I don't think this is going to finish. All right, so yeah, I had to end up simming that match. I don't think the AI knows how to use the table. 
And that's, I guess that's kind of my bad. I should have played the match. But then again, I didn't know the AI didn't know how to set up and use a table. Or the Hart family ends up beating Straight Edge Society in the tag team tables match. Let's move on to match number three. We've got the four-way steel cage match. Christian Kane, Drew McIntyre, and MVP. Bell rings and we are underway with the steel cage match. Christian moves in, misses a heel kick on Kane. Able to reverse, whips Kane right into the cage. Drew McIntyre with a German suplex. McIntyre off the ropes. Face buster by MVP. Kane has to have the clear advantage in this match. He is the biggest competitor, but he gets suplexed. Every man throwing German suplexes. Float over DDT by Christian. MVP stunned on the ropes. Christian looking to take advantage. Head first into the steel cage. Now McIntyre throws Kane head first into the cage. Christian and Kane looking for a double DDT. Some teamwork in this match here. Remember, this is every man for himself. Now Kane turns on Christian and just tosses him. All men fighting in the middle of the ring. It's hard to call what's happening. They're all just punching each other in a circle. Kane gets Irish whipped again hard into the turnbuckle. Goes chest first. And now Christian and Kane with a double choke slam. Christian and Kane working well in this free-for-all match. Kane drops Drew McIntyre. Wheelbarrow into the cage wall. Right in the support beam as MVP gets hung upside down in the corner. Drew McIntyre follows up by running him head first into the cage. Drew McIntyre, the first competitor to try to climb out of the cage here. Kane's right on him and just pulls him to the mat. Now Kane going to try to climb. MVP going to return the favor. Christian going to try to climb. And MVP going to pull him down. And now MVP going to try to climb. And Kane's going to pull him down. And now Kane's going to try to climb. And Drew McIntyre pulls him down. Now Drew McIntyre's going to climb. And Christian's going to pull him down. <laughs> Drew McIntyre pulls back Christian European uppercut. DDT by Kane. And now MVP going to try to escape the cage. But Kane is right there and just kicks him down. Kane sees Christian out the corner of his eye. Going to not let him escape. MVP going to try to escape while McIntyre is caught up with Kane. But he catches him. But Drew McIntyre is right there on him. He misses the drop kick. Christian just falls to the floor. German suplex on Kane. MVP steps behind on Christian. Catches some elbows to the face. Christian with a straight slap to the face. I like that they added the slap sound effect in there. That was kind of funny. Kane lifted up on Drew McIntyre's shoulders. Christian starting to exit the cage. Can McIntyre get over to him in time? And he does. The commentary just called Drew McIntyre's finisher the Scott Drop. Was that what it's called? I thought it was called Broken Dreams, right? It's Broken Dreams, right? Because Shattered Dreams is gold dust. And now Kane going to try to escape the cage here while Drew McIntyre is just dead ass looking at him. And he pays for it. German suplex by McIntyre. So Drew McIntyre in 2011. Like, dude, we get it. Drew McIntyre is Scottish. Like, Kane trying to escape the cage again. And Drew McIntyre is all over him. Kane now with McIntyre slams him down. Christian going to try to escape. Kane's right there to scout it, though. No man has gotten more than barely off the top rope. Kane now with McIntyre lifts him up. Scoop slam. Now hits the ropes. Christian heading to the top rope. Kane lifts up McIntyre by his throat. German suplex by MVP. Kane now catches Christian off the ropes into a choke slam. Kane and MVP, the last two standing. Kane's going to say fuck it and try to get out. And now Kane trying to escape the cage. All three other competitors are down. Kane now higher up on the cage than anybody before him, but Christian is going to catch him. Uh-oh, here we go again, guys. MVP heads up. Drew McIntyre pulls him down. Now Drew McIntyre heads up. Kane will pull him down. And now Kane heads up the cage. MVP now, after knocking Kane off the ropes, is he going to go for it? The ball and elbow. Christian going to decide to try to escape. Drew McIntyre is all over him. MVP off the ropes. He's going to hit it. Ball in. Christian now looking for it. Hits the unprettier. Every opponent is down. It's now Christian's time to climb the cage. And he's not going to do it. Decides to turn his attention to MVP. Could be a mistake. And there he goes. Now Christian headed to the top. All right. So we're about, I don't even know how long we're into this match. But it seems like we're in a loop here where nobody can actually get up the cage. It seems like the recovery time is too quick for them to actually get up the... Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Christian. Do it, Christian. Why do you stop climbing? Yeah, yeah. He, the, nobody can get up the cage. That's the farthest anybody's got up the cage in the last 30 minutes. Unfortunately, I think I might have to sim this match too. And I did end up having to sim the four-way steel cage match. Unfortunately... It doesn't look like the AI is just responsive enough to actually get out of the cage when there's this many superstars in the ring. But Drew McIntyre ended up winning that. And now let's go to our main event, the Big Show versus Jack Swagger. And Rey Mysterio just, he bought a ticket, I guess. He looks like he might be the only one who bought a ticket at the SmackDown. 
Judging by the arena, and with a Big Show versus Jack Swagger main event, can you really blame anyone? Irish whip into the corner. Big Show follows up hip attack. Big Show with the ass-based offense. Catches Swagger back body drop. Goes behind, grabs Big Show German suplex. Now going for a submission, but Big Show's feet are on the ropes. Jack Swagger going to use the full five count on Big Show. Trying to lift up Big Show again, and he does. Jack Swagger showing the strength here. Tossing Big Show around the ring and now lifting him up into the tree of woe and just kicking Big Show right in the cut is Jack Swagger. But Big this Show catches opponent. Swagger, choke slam. But Swagger now with a flurry, trying to fight his way back against the bigger opponent. Swagger now hooks the arms of Big Show. I, for, I just literally forgot Rey Mysterio was shown in the opening cut. Standing over there, look at him, standing there. Show into the corner again, Swagger follows up, shoulder thrust. Big Show dropped, Swagger picks him up to his feet. Picks him up again over the shoulder, running power slam. Show able to stay alive in this match. Incredible bridging suplex by Swagger and another one. Now running into the corner, looking for the Swagger Bomb. Big Show back on his feet. Swagger gonna try to put this match away into the cover, forearm across the face. And that's it, Swagger pins the Big Show in the main event of SmackDown. And there we go, that is SmackDown versus Raw 2011's Universe Mode. All right, and just some recaps from SmackDown. It looks like Matt Hardy and Cody Rhodes' relationship has gotten even worse. You hate to see it. I'm hoping they can just hug it out and thug it out. David Hart Smith defeated CM Punk, a David and Goliath victory. Isn't David Hart Smith bigger than CM Punk? CM Punk's not a small guy, but he's smaller than most other WWE wrestlers at the time, I feel like. And then in the main event, Big Show and Jack Swagger's relationship. Well, there you have it. I just kind of wanted to jump into the first universe mode ever and see how it differs from where universe is now. And it's definitely a lot different. You know, AI issues aside, that's not, that's just for the game. That's not really for universe, but like, it doesn't seem like you can set cutscenes for rivalries. It seems like they just kind of happen and they happen randomly. Like why was Rey Mysterio out there in the crowd with a ticket? He's the world heavyweight champion. Why does he have to buy a ticket to the show to watch the to watch the main event of Jack Swagger versus Big Show. Some things I could be wrong about, but I think are different. And if I am, you can feel free to correct me in the comments. I'm sure you will anyway. It doesn't seem like you can change the shows. Like you're just stuck to Raw, SmackDown, Superstars, and then a pay-per-view at the end of the month. So you can't like add like WCW or anything like that. But yeah, this was my first impressions and first time ever playing SmackDown versus Raw 2011 Universe Mode. If you want to see more videos in 2011 Universe Mode, make sure to leave a comment down in the comment section. Also, make sure you drop a like and subscribe on this video, and I'll see you in the next one.